So now the boss will try to attack and uh, I wonder what he's gonna do. There's not that much left for him to do. He, he has cast all his spells. He has no more mana left. Uh, he could try to disengage, but... Um, well, I mean, we could try, but he needs to disengage basically f uh, from three people. So I don't think this will work. Okay, he missed the first time already. So that means he's got to go into close combat, which isn't great with his spear. That gives him a minus one. Um, so let's see. He's going to attack first the enemy, which is easiest to hit. Huh, that is... Good Lord. Um, I think it's... I think it's this guy here. And that is a hit, I guess. Mm, pretty sure that is a hit. And that means he gets four damage dice. Okay. I got a armor of five, so he's got to roll good if he wants to do damage. Oh. Oh no, that is definitely not bad. Okay, so he deals two wounds and that is not a good thing. And he pushes me back. He can do that. Then, but I don't think he's gonna follow me because he's got that long range weapon. So for him, it's basically an advantage if he's a little bit away from me. Okay, so that was his first activation. Oh, you know what? I forgot to roll this die here, but nothing happens. Now he's gonna... That's the second one. The enemy which dealt the most damage during the last turn. Okay, let's see. This is... Um... I think it's probably this guy here. So, let's see. And this time I was doing great. So, another, the last activation. And this is now the enemy with the lowest um, armor. And that is... I mean, these two guys have kind of the same armor, so I would say maybe on a one to three he attacks the centaur. Okay, so he goes again after the physician. And that was close, let's say it that way. We both rolled a seven. I think my combat value is a little better. I got a minus one because of the flail. But he also has a minus one because he is using his weapon as a sh in, in short range combat, his long range weapon. So I think I've won that. Nice. So it's me again and I'm going to do an attack with a centaur here. And that looks good. I attack from behind so this is definitely some damage. And I get six dice. Not bad, not bad at all, um, but I think it's just, actually, I think he's got, yeah, he's got five, no, wait a second, here, he's got four, he's got an armor of four, so that means I deal three damage, and he's down to three, so now this guy will attack the physician and he hopes for a kill now that sh should be enough I guess yeah that's enough my combat value is better that is a hit and I'm pretty sure I got good odds now to kill him I get five dice 
minus one on his combat value. I need to do three damage. <laughs> I only do two. So he's just wounded. He's not dead yet. Incredible. Um, my goodness. So I guess it's time for the Berserker. He's going to take his healing potion. So that allows him to heal. Wow, he was... Whoa, he was really in a bad shape, man. He only ha he was already wounded. Holy crap. Okay, so he's in better shape now and he's now going to attack this guy. Oh. Obviously a blunder. I'm going to reroll. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay, that was not good enough. And I'm gonna do another attack. This is it. And he blundered. That was all too much now for him. So he will lose his weapon, but we're not gonna go any further here. Now he is probably dead. Just need to roll. Yeah, okay, that's it. He is done. The enemy boss is done. So we might still have a few encounters, but not, not such a massive creature anymore. We had the lizard, and that was then the boss who was trying to hunt us. Sometimes you encounter him later, sometimes earlier. But this was, in a way, that was the big climactic battle now. And it definitely was a big battle. And... The Celestial was killed, technically. We just had, luckily, enough fortune to survive. So, um, okay. So what we can do now is we can search the bodies, of course. So let's see what we get. Uh, we have the boss creature had uh, four strength and four intelligence, so it's four dice. We had a shooter, five dice, six dice, the dire wolf, and the orc champion. So we got eight dice overall. Uh, so let's see, we want fives and sixes. And that is very good actually. Four, awesome, and two fours. Wow, that is an impressive roll. So first of all, we get six bucks. For the, for the four plus, so that was already really good. And now we got four, five, and sixes. And that gives us, if I'm not mistaken, rare armor or weapons. Yeah, so we're gonna roll again. On a one, it's a rare armor. And on a two to six, it's gonna be a rare weapon. Okay, that's a rare weapon, now let's see. I'm going to shuffle and draw from the bottom here. Or I'm going to simply draw from the bottom. So it's this one here. Uh, okay, that's an elven bow. Uh, so, and it's a rare weapon because it requires a roll to get it. This number down here. Only average size characters except red, red folk and dwarvens. Now this is interesting and I might consider using that. I was thinking about uh, maybe giving a, sh a shooting weapon to the centaur and but I did not find a good one until now but the elven bow is pretty good uh, so I wonder if I should should make him a shooter. You know, I think I'm not going to take the bow. I mean, I'm going to keep it, but I'm probably not going to use it. I'm quite happy with this combination of the elven sh sword and the great shield. And it would be a different story, for example, if the, if the sword would break or something, or maybe the shield would break. Then I might switch to the bow. But right now I'm going to keep it. I'm probably going to sell the composite bow, maybe also the, the crossbow, and just keep the elven bow in case I want to 
yeah, I want to change that. Um, yeah, so, okay. So the last thing now we can do here is we can interact with the amphoras here. We can search them. So we roll 5d6, and for every result of fix, we, uh, 6, we find a coin. If two or more 6 are rolled, a random potion is found. Okay, so let's do that. Mm, yeah, okay, that wasn't so great. So let's get this clutter out of the way here. Oh, and one more thing I forgot. I think I rolled two sixes when I searched the bodies, and that gives me two of these standard objects. So this is a vigorous meat, plus one to use a strength during this turn and the next three ones. User also recovers one life point, that's pretty awesome. And a torch, nice. Um, okay, let's give that to him. So, let's put this all aside here, and then we're going to continue our way through the dungeon. And this is now a little bit tricky. So we are located here, and I mean, this is not a bad position, right? We got openings in both directions, but... Yeah, time is running out. So I think what I want to do is uh, I want to run. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how that works now because uh, we have only basically, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to go. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns, but the seventh would already be problematic. So first we're going to push this here and um, we don't know what happens, right? It, it's possible that we end up in a dead end or so. So we have to make sure that we, uh, that we can um, at least advance a little bit further here. Um, we're too slow. But running is risky. So what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, we're going to check if there's a trap here, just like the normal um, way. Um, so let's see. And, yeah. Okay, there's a trap, not good. And we have a minus two on perception while we're running. So that is already a problem. Let's see what we get. So that is a stake. It affects the square occupied by the character who triggered it. Character must pass an agility with a minus two penalty. If the roll is failed, he suffers six damage dice. Okay, that is great. So this guy is the one who is usually going ahead. So that means he's got to do the perception test. He's got a minus two perception. He's got a plus three because of the eagle eye, the hunter and the cat. So he's got a plus one. So he needs an eight. That's not easy. Ah, uh, nearly, man, god damn it. So you didn't get it. Okay, that means, oh yeah, now he's got to do an agility test with a minus two penalty. So his agility is four, so that means he needs again an eight. And he's got the leather armor, which is a minus one, and he's got the great shield, which is a minus one. So I think I need a 10 here. No, no way, man. Okay, so that should cost him, by the way, three points. There we go. Wow, man, that is, that is rough. And now we're talking six damage dice and a minus one to armor. armor. And I'm knocked down. So that means the running is over at that point already because I'm knocked down. Okay, that is terribly bad. Um, shit, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible card. Well, okay, anyway, let's do it. We draw, we have to take six damage dice, and 
That could kill us. Well, not quite. We take three wounds, which is really bad, but uh, at least we're still alive. And you know what? I, I think we have one potion. Oh, yeah, he actually has a healing potion, so I'm going to drink that. This is our last healing potion. Uh, okay, so that was already bad, and uh, yeah, because he was he was basically uh, yeah he was hit by the trap, so he's KO'd, which means or he's knocked down, so he cannot run this turn. So basically, we we kind of in a way we did not really lose that turn, but it was not the a running turn, if you understand what I mean. So we just continue our way through here. We're gonna enter now here. And this is it. And now we got to check if we have um, an encounter and we don't. Okay, so that is something. And the time continues. And I'm going to try running again. So I kind of lost the bonus. Usually when you run, you can, uh, you can basically uh, pass through two tiles instead of one during one turn. But because of this trap, um, yeah, we couldn't do that. So I want to go here now, and I'm going to, again, try to run. So, okay, this time there's no trap. That's good news. Uh, let's see what we get here. Okay, that is a medium-sized room. So we're going to enter here and we're going to draw two furniture cards. Now while I'm running, I'm not allowed to interact with furniture, but we could have, for example, special elements and I could also decide to stop running if there is something super interesting in there. But this is all empty. And now because I'm running, kind of as a reminder for the safe zone in the standard rules, we got to simply roll if there's a trap in this room. And there's not. Okay, nice. Then we have to roll if there's an encounter in this room. And there is not, which is awesome. So we are running through this room and that means we are now allowed to take another tile. And of course we're going to go down here. Oops. Wait a second, first we gotta check if there's, we open the door now, so we ran through the room, gonna open the door, and this time there is again a trap. Uh, let's see what that is. That's a block of stone, oh man. It affects the square occupied by the character who activated the trap. Okay, same problem. A large block of stone collapses on the character. An agility test is required. Okay, so first we got to see if we can uh, make a perception test here. Um, although I don't think that this really matters that much. We, I mean, let's do it anyway. Let, why not? Let's do it. So... That's a five. That's mm, that might even be enough. Um, so I got a perception of minus two, but I got a plus three. So I have exactly a six, and that's what I need. So I do see this block of stone. Um, the question is now: I'm running. Do I stop and try to disable the trap? And by the way, this guy loses another three points. One, two, three. So do I stop and try to disable the trap? Or do I keep on running here? But then I would have to, to, to kind of take the damage. Whoa! If it is passed, no, I cannot do that. I have to try to disable the trap. Or maybe I might even consider going this way. But if I go this way, 
Man, this is tough. So I have to take, if I, if I risk it, I would have to take an agility test, which is not easy with all my, my crap here. And if I pass the test, I take 5 damage. If I fail the test, I take 10 damage. So this is really not great. Um, and I'm, I'm absolutely not sure. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I cannot do it. So we're going to stop here running. Um, and the question now is, will I try to disable the door? Um, yeah, I think I will. Uh, I think I have to try that. We don't have any dexterity stuff left. Oh, look at that. This is actually a minus one. Oh, I didn't know that. Look at that. God damn it. The great shield is a minus one on perception. Oh, that's a big deal. I didn't see that. Uh, wow, that's tough. I might even consider, under these circumstances, in the future, because that means that I did not make the test, the perception test. And that means I might actually go with the elven bow in the future, because this is a problem. A minus one on perception is not cool. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, so, yeah, we fucked up the test, which means we got to do an agility test now which is going to be hard, and we might be killed by this thing. But you know, then we might just keep on running. <laughs> That's an 8, so that is actually pretty good. Um, that's enough. An 8 is good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. So that means we take 5 damage dice, which is not good. Minus one to armor, which is not good, but um, we can keep on running, which is good. Okay, so I take two hits. Uh, nope, that's actually not correct. I take three damage here. Okay, so that was the trap here at the door, the block of stone. Pretty rough. And, you know, I'm actually thinking about now exchanging my shield and my weapon for the elven bow because that improves my perception. I forgot about that. I didn't know that. That's tough. Okay, and now we keep on running. So that means we don't have to push this any further. We simply will draw another card. We opened the door, there was the block of stone, he took a bad hit, but he stumbled on and look at this shit. This is a dead end. Oh man, that's just a small room, so we're gonna draw a furniture card. It's empty. We're gonna draw roll for the trap because we entered the room running, so there could be a trap. And there is another trap. Holy shit. Okay. And that is a reinforced door. Uh, so, if this card wasn't revealed by trying to open a door, keep it face up. It will be activated the next time the heroes attempt to open a door. And the scenario die gives a result of uh, the monster face. Okay, that's not cool. But, alright, I mean, for now nothing happened. Uh, but that could be a massive problem because eventually we might have to somehow try to open this reinforced door, which is going to be harsh. Okay, um, so now we're stuck in this room and we have to check if there's an encounter in the room. And there is not. No monsters. Uh, and I think we have to roll again. Yeah. Because these were in the last two rooms, we had no encounters, so we have to roll twice. And again, no creature in this room. That is a good thing. 
However, time is running out. Uh, let's face it. Um, I have to find a secret door here. If I don't, I'm really in trouble. I basically have to run back, try to make my way through here, and then somehow go down here, and I probably die. So in the end, it comes now down to the next row. So we're gonna search for a secret door. That costs us a time. So we gotta roll three dice, and we need a six. We can reroll one of the dice because of our eagle eye, but it's really important now to roll a six. And there it is. This is our six. This is fucking amazing. I'm gonna reroll one of the dice. Maybe we find more. Okay, that's a one. So, all we found was a secret door, but that is good enough for me. And we also found a buck, by the way, because, yeah, we rolled a six. Whoa, that was close, and now we're moving through the secret door. So, the place this goes on. But now we are back in time. The running paid off. It was painful. This guy took a lot of damage. But we are now back in time. So we, we go into this room now, <laughs> but we can choose in which direction because it's the, this is what happens when you, when you, I'm going to actually place it like this. Okay, so we are here and there was this kind of connection, the door between these two arrows. Okay, um, so again, a small room, so we draw one furniture card, it's empty again. And we get a check for an encounter. And there is no encounter. And because we're not running anymore, we don't have to check for traps uh, when we enter normal rooms. So when you enter rooms, you have to check for a trap. Uh, when you run, you have to check for a trap whenever you open a door, obviously. And in addition, you have to simply check for a trap when you basically move through a room, right? That's that comes in addition to that. So that is super dangerous. Running is something you definitely want to avoid, but it brought us back in time. So now if we can avoid the reinforced door, we should be able to make it out of the castle, which would be really great. Okay, so now this goes on and we're gonna go into the next room the question is, is there going to be a trap? Nope. However, we got this symbol, which means we try to open the door and it is a reinforced door. There we go now. Shit. So that means this guy has to spend another three points, so he's now down to ten points. Ugh. The door the character is trying to open is locked and reinforced. It can be opened stealthily by passing a dexterity test. Choose one character, only one attempt is allowed. Okay. Okay, man, that is tough. Um, wow, man, that really sucks. Oh boy, do I try that? Um, the thing is, if I try it, I basically lose that. That's just my rule. It's like disabling a trap. I basically lose another turn just trying it. But I think if I remember that right, also my the first attack is then free. You know, yeah, we might as well just try. Um, Yeah, okay. Fuck it. One person can try. Um, is there maybe, let's see, is there any negative modifiers for dexterity? Let's say this guy tries it. We don't have any, no, yeah, okay. So we simply need a 10, which is, up. no, we need a 12. Holy crap. Okay, hey man, maybe we're lucky. No, we're not. What do I close? So it didn't work. Now we got to we got to fight ourselves through this door. So that means we... Um, so the first attempt, now everybody can attack, and that's kind of free, that doesn't cost us time. Um, 
but then from then on it will actually cost us an extra time so let's do this um, okay so I mean I, I suggest we start with this guy and maybe it makes sense now every every bit counts right so maybe we should use strength uh, didn't have any uh, yeah this guy had maybe I can give that to him the vigorous meat I'm gonna give that to him that gives him a plus one strength and he can heal yeah he's got the great weapon so we're gonna give that to him allows him to heal and then Okay, that's actually four turns, basically. So let's give him four markers for that. If we should get into a fight or something, that will be also helpful. Okay, so that means we now got a strength of five. So we got seven dice. And... It's a minus two, so a four plus is a hit. Maybe we can actually destroy that thing. Mm. Okay, I mean, that's at least already three damage. So that isn't so bad. It was not quite what I was hoping for, but... <sighs> kind of could ask yourself if you want to reroll that, right? But... I don't know. I'm thinking about... Nah. No, I think it's okay. Okay, now... Maybe we're lucky. He's got a minus one. So he's got four dice. And he needs a five or six. Oh, wow, that was pretty good, actually. So two more damage. Awesome, man. We are busting through this door. So we just need one more damage. And then we can make it through this door without losing any additional time. That would be insanely cool. Um, you know what? I'm going to exchange weapons here. And I'm going to use the Rage War. <laughs> uh, yeah, because this gives also minus one against doors. And this is exactly what we need now uh, against armor. So let's hope for the best here. Oh no, man, we fucked up. But, you know, I'm going to reroll that. This is so important for me. We're really running out of time. So I'm going to give that another try. I need one five. And then we're good. There we go. Okay, so that was cool. We managed to destroy the door. <sighs> Rough. But we made definitely quite a bit of noise here. So if we should have an encounter now um, in the next room, we are in trouble. Okay, so let's draw a tile. Oh man, I don't fucking believe that. It's again the wrong tile. Shit. At least there's a way out here. So we move in here. That is a medium room, so we draw two cards. It's a bonfire. And it's empty. Okay, so there's just this bonfire there. And then we check if we have an encounter there. We got to roll twice because we haven't had encounters before. Nope. And yes, we actually do have an encounter in this medium room. So let's see. It's a wandering creature. So that is going to be a wandering creature right here. Oh, that's not so bad. This is a warrior with an axe and an improvised shield and a shooter with a short bow. Um, so this time we come from a medium room into a 
Uh, no, the other way around. We come from a small room into a medium room, so we need to find the bonfire and then we can simply enter the room here. Okay, so we open the door and we see the scenery here. There's a bonfire here. These two guys hanging out there. And we got to do an initiative roll and because we smashed the door, it was a reinforced door, um, they heard us, or I mean, at least they heard something. So they got a, a, a plus one. Uh, let's see if there's anything special. I don't think they, uh, I don't think they have. There's the shooter. And we gotta find a, what was that, a warrior? Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, that was a warrior with an axe. Okay, so they don't have a bonus. Um, I do have a plus one, plus two, I think. I got a plus two, and they got a plus one. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, man, so it seems like they win that, which is... Serious issue. Um, I could force them to reroll, but honestly, I don't know. Um, if I do that, I have only one fortune left. You know. I don't think I want that. In this way, I will definitely survive. So now we are probably caught off guard because um, they got a six and a four, which exceeds this. And yeah, pretty much everyone except for the Celestial is caught off guard. So we're going to place these guys like that. And that is not good. And now the shooter will activate and he's got now a good chance to hit this guy badly and maybe even kill him. So let's hope this is, this is not happening here. So yeah, he shoots from behind, which gives him a bonus. Oh man, that's a nine. That's definitely a hit. Holy crap, it's a short bow, so he has four dice. And... I mean, I got my leather armor, so I got an armor of four. That is three hits. So I'm, again, wounded. I'm nearly dead, but I'm wounded. Oh, man. And now I will get attacked by the Orc Warrior. And that is not good. So again he attacks from behind and I'm in a very bad shape. So it is totally likely that he finishes me now off. Oh, by the way, actually we should roll if he gets any bonus and he doesn't. Hmm. I mean that wasn't bad, but it's not going to be good enough I guess. I'm not even sure if I can use this thing by the way. Well, we'll see later. First of all, let, let's finish that. So I got, got a four. Um, the warrior has a three. He's got an axe, which is another minus one. That's pretty good. But he gets a plus one because... He attacks from behind. I've got a minus one here. So right now we're even, but I'm wounded, which gives me another minus one. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's it. I think he wins. So that means he does now massive damage with his axe 
it's four dice and it's a minus one on my armor so yeah I mean, okay that's it I'm dead however I am allowed to spend a fortune and on a five or six I can ignore the, the damage and look at that awesome and what I'm gonna do is you know this rule I'm allowed to basically move away and I can stand up next turn I'm not no longer in the in the range of an enemy for this turn because let's say there would be a third one I could ignore the hits and but I would still be wounded and then that third one would attack me and I would get killed immediately but in this way it's not happening and he moves now here because he kind of fucked me up and now it's time to take revenge okay so first this guy will stand up Second, I'm going to move with her here and I'm going to use my healing spell. Ugh. Good God. Ah, uh, yeah. I got no nothing. I can't do anything. No fortune. So that one didn't work. Um, so these two guys now somehow have to work things out so on a one two i'm not gonna do the berserker here i'm just gonna do a standard roll don't want to risk too much here and by the way this should be gone i guess so let's see okay that is a hit excellent got a plus one strength uh, i think the guy has an improvised shield though if i'm not mistaken yeah Oh man, incredible. He even manages to block that. But the shield is now destroyed because I got this shield smashing battle axe. Oh man. And I think I can push this guy and he takes a damage die no matter what because his shield broke. Okay, so at least he takes a damage. And now this guy can move in. Does he even want to do that? He's got the stealth ability. So he moves by and then attacks this guy. Um, but to make that happen, I gotta push this guy here, I think. Because then I can ignore melee once and then I can go in here. Okay, so now we gotta attack this guy with the flail. And that is good enough. So I deal four dice of damage. That is not bad either. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so that's three damage. So the orc shooter is wounded. I can simply place it here. Okay, it's the dark player again. So he's gonna roll a die. And yeah, that's going to be a power card. Tough skin. One creature at the dark player's choice gets a plus one to its natural armor until the end of the engagement. So that means it's going to be this one here. This is going to be the better fighter. So he's got a plus one on armor and that costs him another two points. Hmm. Gotta remember that, so I'm gonna place an armor marker here just as a reminder. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so now the shooter will try to disengage, and that is a seven. Um, no, that's not good enough, so he can't. That means we go into close combat. Nope, okay, so at least that worked out. And now we get attacked again by the orc. Nothing. 
Okay, so that was fine. So, let's see, it's me again. First I'm going to attack the shooter again. That looks pretty good, that's definitely enough. But we still have to finish him. So I got four dice. Yep. Okay, so the shooter is done. I'm going to try again to heal this guy with the Celestial. That's a six. That's good enough. So we, we got to spend an, a mana for this. And, well, I need another marker here. Mm, running out of mana markers. Goddamn. Okay, that means I can remove now four wounds from him. Which is really, really good. And now the barbarian will attack. Again, not in Berserker mode though, and we gotta remove another one of these tokens. That looks very promising. Remember, the guy has now uh, one more armor. And he can try it. No, his shield is gone, so he cannot try that anymore. So we got now, let, let, wait a minute. Plus one to strength, so he's got a strength of five, seven, and it was a critical, I think. So we got eight dice. Okay. Two, four, six, eight. So let's see, he's now got an armor of five, minus two, so that means we need a three plus. Oh, it's gonna be enough, yeah. That was just enough. Okay, nice. So we managed to kill these two guys, which allows us to roll two dice. And we found a random item and a buck. A small common item and a buck. Oh, that's the master key. Nice. That's a good, that's a great item. Then we're going to interact with the bonfire, so we're going to roll a d6. Wow, that's a 6, and we can add something. And no, Someone left provisions by the fire. You find one pack of provisions. Awesome. So I'm thinking about simply using this. I'm not in such a great shape. I'm going to eat the provisions right away, get rid of one of these, and, and that's it. So one less wound. That was pretty good. But now, we're again in trouble. What are we going to do here? Um, you know what? We're going to give it again a try with the secret door. Oh, man. So, again, we got three dice. We have to find a door here. Otherwise, we are in deep trouble. Oh, boy. We can reroll one of the dice. Yes! Incredible! We found it! It's a six. We managed to find a door. That is so cool. And we found a buck. Man, that is insane. We really needed that six. Okay, now we are allowed to simply move and we can be now pretty sure that this is it. Man, it was really this styro. And Look how close we are to dying. And actually we might. Uh, wow, it's going to be super harsh. So let's see. Okay, this is a large room. So it all comes down to the next... I mean, yeah, if we roll a 1 in the next turn, we're fucked. It's over, we've lost the party. Uh, so it's not, it's not over yet at all. So we found that thing and... Um... Yeah, I mean, okay, let's, let's hope for the best here. So first of all, we got to check if we have an encounter, which is not unlikely. If we roll two, um, we have to roll twice because it's a large room. Nope. 
Okay, so there's no encounter here. So that means we are now in this room. Oh man. And <laughs> time passes on. And now we got to roll if we roll a one. If we roll a one, we're fucked. And there's no re-rolling or anything. Like, I mean, this is real rogue dungeon here. But what can you say? I mean, we were extremely unlucky with, with all these. Oh, man. So let's hope for the best here. Come on. We need... no, not a one, please. Okay, that was a four. So the sun is still above the horizon. All we got to check now is, is there going to be a trap? And there is no trap. So we made it outside. Holy crap! That was, that was intense. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, that, was, that was a great adventure. Um, and it was super close. Okay, so we're outside, which means we are now located right here. And well, first as a reward, we will now get all new skills. Then we have to make it to a settlement. And in a settlement, we can spend the money for all kinds of things, but also for uh, development points. So 10 bucks for a single development point and um, yeah then then we have another mission probably here I think that's against the human kingdoms so uh, yeah I think that's that's probably it for now yeah I think I'm gonna load this up I'm also not a hundred percent certain if I find the time to to continue this in the next days uh, I want to do another mission to to show you a little more how this works um, but um, I will be probably maybe busy in the next five days but I'm not sure maybe not we'll see uh, so yeah for now I'm gonna load it up and I hope to see you in the next video bye Hello friends, you're with a Lonesome Gamer, and I'm playing Dungeon Universalis. And we have a big battle going on against the uh, boss of the Orc faction here. It's uh, this guy here, he is a Orc Shaman boss. And then we got an Orc Champion here, and also an Orc Shooter. And we managed to kill the dire wolf already. Oops, there's two other guys. And um, basically, I think we're doing okay. The only one in a critical situation is the celestial here. She has no more fortune left, and that could be a problem if she takes a bad hit. So I gotta be really careful about her, but I think the others are still doing fine. The other problem that we have is the time. We're already back there. So we basically have one, two, three, four, five, six turns, and then things are getting tricky. Then we have to roll a die, and for example here, if we roll a one, we're dead. If we go here, if we roll a one or two, we're dead, and so on. So I don't want to take that risk and therefore we probably have to run through the dungeon. We have to start running, which makes things even more dangerous. Okay, but first we got to finish that battle and it's my turn. So um, I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to fight the Orc Champion first, I think. Ugh, and that is a blunder. Isn't that great? What a start. So I'm going to reroll that, of course. I don't want to take a blunder here. Okay, that is much better. That's a hit. And there was one thing I was actually not so sure about, and that is 
shield. Um, has a melee fighter. Hmm. I think he. I think he does not really use the shield action. So he does not. I think he just tries to to do a single roll if he can basically block. So let, let's do that. Okay, that didn't work. So I'm pretty sure I can kill him now. I got uh, four dice. Yeah, okay, that's a minus one against his armor. So that means that, yeah, he's got an armor of five. So we managed to kill the guy. Okay, and he was already wounded. So that was pretty good. And now, uh, I'm, I can still move, so I'm going to move here. And then I'm going to try to attack the, um, with, the, with the other guy, the Berserker, the Barbarian. I'm going to try now to attack um, the, uh, the leader here. I'm thinking about maybe casting the light aura that could give him in a better position could bring him in a better position uh, I wonder if I would need that probably not I think I'm okay oh, man I'm thinking about maybe I should no I'm not okay let's, so let's see and that didn't work, but I got another roll. I got a second attack. Okay, that's a six against a six, but also I'm pretty sure that did not work. I got too many negative modifiers going on here. Okay. Um, so then I'm gonna use my Celestial one, two, three, four. I'm going to move here and I'm going to use my light spear. Try to kill the orc shooter. And that worked. And I even get an extra die. So I'm pretty sure this guy is killed. Uh, so I got a place at marker here. So I get five damage dice against his intelligence, which is probably not too high. Uh, yeah, it's a three. I just need one more. Okay, so he's done. Okay, so that means we also managed to kill this guy. And now maybe the scout is able to kill the boss, but nah, probably not. Uh, let's see. Oh man, shockingly bad. Nope, he couldn't. 